Hi, I'm Dr. Shah. I was the National Lecture Competition winner in 1989, and I'm the Maths Master at Maths School. Now, ready for a new way of doing maths? How to calculate covariance. And covariance is used when we have bivariate data. That means we have x's and y's, and we want to see if those two are varying together or if they're just quite randomly, they're not connected to each other. So covariance is a measure of how much x and y vary together. So in order to calculate covariance, first of all, we're going to have to learn a few simpler things. First thing we need to be able to do is find the mean of x and the variance of x, and we need to find the mean of y and the variance of y. So to find the mean of x, which I'm going to call x bar, I add up all the x values, so add them all up, and that should give me 45. Count how many there are. Well, I can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so my mean of x is um, 5. So first thing we're going to do is find the mean of x. We've done that. Next thing we're going to do is find the variance of x. Now, the variance of x is sigma x squared over n minus the mean squared. Well, the mean we've just worked out is 5. Sigma x squared means I've got to square all these values and add them up. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, all added up together. And you do that on the calculator and you should get 285 as your answer for that. n is still 9. There are still 9 values. And so n we're going to replace with 9. And we said before that our mean of x was 5, so 5 squared. And then when you work that out, again on the calculator, you'd get 20 over 3. So there's my variance of x. So we now know the mean of x and the variance of x. I'm going to put those aside. And then carry on to work out the next thing. So just in the same way as we found the mean of x and the variance of x, we're going to do the same for the y values. So the mean of y is found by adding up all the y values. Again, sticking them in the calculator. You should get 72 as your answer. Divide it by how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so the mean of y is 8. And we also need the variance of y, variance of y is found by sigma y squared over n minus y bar squared. So same formula as the variance of x, except we're just using the letters y here. We know our um, mean of y, which we worked out before, was 8. So that's 8 squared. Our sigma y squared is going to be 5 squared and 4 squared and 5 squared and 6 squared and 8 squared and 9 squared and 10 squared and 13 squared and 12 squared all added together. Again, you do that on your calculator and that will give you 660. And divided by n, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, as, every, as in every case. And so that gives you an answer of 28 over 3. And again, I'll store these numbers. So my mean of y was 8 and my variance of y was 28 over 3. Okay, so now to work out the covariance, we're going to add another row onto this table, which is going to be called xy. And to work that out, we're going to multiply the x values by the y values. So 1 times 5, 5. 2 times 4, 8. 3 lots of 5, 15. 4 lots of 6, 24. 5 lots of 8 is 40, 6 times 9 is 54, 70, 8 times 13 is 104, and 9 times 12 is 108. Now we've done that, we're going to work out the covariance in the same sort of way. Covariance xy is sigma xy over n minus mean of x, mean of y. You notice how it's similar to the equation we used for variance of x and variance of y. Variance of x was sigma x squared, or xx. This is xy. 
and here you'd have x bar times x bar and here we've got x bar times y bar so to notify the fact that we're not just using x we're using x and y together this time our sigma xy is found by adding all of these together so we add all of these together again sticking that into the calculator that gives you 428 our n is still 9, there's 9 values our mean of x we worked out before was 5 and our mean of y we worked out before was 8 and again just sticking that into the calculator gives us our answer as being 68 over 9 for the covariance xy so that's how to work out the covariance now that we've done that we can go a step further the covariance tells us how they vary together um, but a more uh, precise measurement of the correlation between them is called the correlation coefficient now because we've worked out the covariance of x y and we've worked out the variance of x and we've worked out the variance of y that means we can quite easily work out the correlation coefficient correlation coefficient is called r and it's equal to covariance xy divided by the square root of the variance of x times the square root of the variance of y. We know our covariance xy from before was 68 over 9. Variance of x we worked out before was 20 over 3. Variance of y we worked out before was 28 over 3. And then just sticking that into the calculator gives you an answer of 0.9578. If our correlation coefficient is close to 1, that would mean perfect um, positive linear correlation. That means they vary very well together when x increases, y also increases. If our correlation coefficient is quite close to 0, that means they don't really vary together, they're not connected. And if our correlation coefficient is close to minus 1, that means they are very uh, correlated, but it means as x increases, y goes down, y decreases. So in this case, we have very strong evidence of positive linear correlation.